Welcome to Ordinal Revolution. My name is Shizzy. On this channel, we cover the entire Ordinal space. We cover every aspect of the space, guys. We're, we're here and we're we're just we're covering, trying to cover all the projects in this Ordinal space. We're trying to give you guys the, the freshest data, the freshest projects. And just remember, everything on this channel is all for research purpose, purposes. We really try to give you guys like the, the earliest stuff. So be very careful on everything that we talk about use it for research and that's just kind of how we do it here and uh, if you're new here please hit the subscribe hit the like for us guys we appreciate it. we're growing so quickly we appreciate all you guys and uh let's get let's get into it. we have a founder interview today we have uh console they're a really cool project i'm not going to spoil it at all but uh we were digging into it for the last two weeks and me and yagobi are very interested so let's let's bring in uh my partner as always mr yagobi what's up buddy what up what up what up what's going on man not much, man. Not much. Just uh, I'm excited about today's uh, founder discussion here. You know, um, we're starting to see uh, more and more of this kind of idea that was talked about, I was, you know, like years ago about how the blockchain can really, you know, kind of change and decentralize a lot of our social applications um, and just just applications in general and media in general. Right. And this is another example of that. Um, so really cool. I'm excited to learn more about it because I don't know a ton about it. Um, you know, I, yeah. I did jump into their website and and kind of saw that they're, you know, kind of have a little bit of a, like a discord type of approach, but there's much more is what it seems like. So yeah. excited to get into it. Yeah, it's really cool. Like um, I was looking at it, too. It's like it's it's discord, man. It's, but it's like it's hard. It's hard to say that because it's so much more than that. And we'll, we'll let Chris get into that because I don't want to like you know, kind of give any misinformation. So let's, without further ado, let's bring them in. Hey, doing, Chris? Yo, how's it going? Good to be yeah. here. Good to see you, Shizzy. What's up, Yagobi? What's going on? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you me. being here. Yep. All right. So um, we we'll just kind of get into what we normally do here. Um, so on this channel, we we um, you know, obviously we love projects. We dig, dig really deep in the projects, but to us, it's really about the people. And um. So if you don't have a good people in the space, you don't have a good space. We saw that with Ethereum. We, we don't want that again to happen because we think Bitcoin ordinals are going to be bigger than than anything. And I think we feel like a lot of chains are going to be coming over here. So we try to weed out the bad people, the good people. So we kind of want to meet you as a person. So if you can kind of dig into your background as far as you can go back up until about the first time you heard that magical word called Bitcoin. I heard Bitcoin first in 2013, living in the Bay Area doing my first or second, I guess it was startup at the time, fundraising, that whole thing. And we were doing Y Combinator uh, in 2013, which if maybe rings a bell uh, for Bitcoin people is one year after Coinbase. We were right after Coinbase. And so people, you know, Paul Graham, people, you know, Boucher, Gary Tan, all the people were like kind of, behind the scenes obsessed with Bitcoin because um, I think for the first time it was really easy to buy it. Uh, at the same time, I'll be honest, I was just so confused at first why, <laughs> why this this one guy, uh, his name is Bennett, was like getting rid of all his belongings and putting all his money into Bitcoin and, and pay, he was a, like we were working with him for a bit. He was paying his consultants with Bitcoin. I was just like, what is this world? And I have an experience before that um, as a developer building in the BitTorrent P2P space. And so it took a little bit of getting to understand Bit Bitcoin even back then, because I was like trying to piece it together. But as soon as I could see that, you know, what for me as like a musician sending BitTorrent of like my music to people directly, oh, okay, BitTorrent is essentially, uh, Bitcoin is essentially like that for money what it was for music it is for money and then i think you know bringing it to ordinals bringing it to web3 and all the different things it's like oh we can bring that to other parts so it kind of like full circle now i think we start in my mind we started with art we went to money and now it's like connecting the pieces back to uh to the creators that's awesome so yeah. um so I, was, I was just gonna say yeah i actually got introduced to bitcoin in 2013 as well and it, like I purchased on Coinbase, I pulled up the receipt in my email, shows Shizzy, and I was I was just like, you know, was like, what what is going on? Because it's my coworkers and stuff. But that's awesome, you know. That I never heard of kind of that correlation to BitTorrent and during you know that whole period. Um, but it makes a lot of sense. 
So that, that's that's pretty cool. And so that led you up into ordinals, um, and that's where you are now. Or did you kind of kind of go into like stacks and stuff, or how did you find ordinal? Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know how you guys feel about stacks and stuff. Uh, curious to go back. Yeah, okay, okay. Go curious to go back and forth. Um, uh, you know, I think you know coming back to like where I was, like in my own story um in the bay area at that time it was one year later that um that muni bali came with stacks and juan benet of of filecoin uh went through y combinator and so you know i was being exposed to these mostly that was my network and i think the way the thing that got me like really turned on to what they were talking about was like using the power of bitcoin or the things we've learned from like p2p in order to like bring it to the rest of the world. And for me, I think as like a builder at that stage, at least, I think it was always like, let's just see what, what is possible. I think the more experiments we do, the more we can learn. And so I was just really hungry to like build again as like a developer in the past. Um, but as I mentioned, I was building a different company, completely different company in the education space. And so kind of, kind of it was like a side project for me. I guess, you know, long story short, like as soon as I left that company, um, I started console where I am now uh, in 2021. We are part of Trust Machines, which is Munibali's new company and really focused on building the Bitcoin ecosystem. So really anything that has to do with Bitcoin and it can be lightning, it can be stacks, it can be ordinals, it can be, but just really just like really fostering, I think through funding and through, um, like advice and like you know kind of like an incubator but it's more like an app studio um and so we kind of came out of that because you know we believe that chat community identity social i think all could have a connection um you know to to bitcoin as like one thesis so that's that's partially like our our beginnings in building out console gotcha that's awesome so just take me back a little bit. I kind of want to um, keep going to you for a bit. So um, I'm guessing you, uh, uh, you 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 leave college with. Um, I'm guessing you were like a programmer. You said developer. Yeah, that's more of your background. Is it like a developer type person? I mean, that a little bit? I mean, I was a musician. Like I was a music okay. major, um, but I taught okay. myself how to code because like nobody awesome. yeah. <laughs> nobody knew like how to like. So I was just like trying to share my music. I wanted my goal was to get my music on. BitTorrent, so that gotcha. distribution is the hardest thing yeah. for artists. It still is, and I think a lot of people forget that when we think about like you know fractionalized music and all that stuff. But yeah. musicians just, just want to be heard, and so <laughs> yeah. uh, that's how I went from music to like peer to peer sharing of files. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So um, let's 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 just jump into council then. Um, so what what is council? Um, what, what is it trying to be? And like like kind of like what where do you see it um going? Yeah, console, you can go there today, console XYZ. Um, We're in beta, we have a few thousand users. And the problem that I had, um, and usually an entrepreneur or some creative will will create out of their own use case, their problem case, right? Um, The problem I have is that, you know, for 10 years, like we've been building, or more than 10 years, like we've been building apps, you know, in this like web two space, web three space, whatever we want to call it. Um, at first, I think with like sending and receiving Bitcoin and then in the Ethereum ecosystem, all this stuff. And it's just been like, we have all these tools that we believe are, I would say bringing us sovereignty or user owned money, user owned data. So this is the direction we're moving financially, creatively. And then at the same time, all of these communities, everybody's just building their sovereign, like user owned world on top of like the most black box, like IPO centralized app. <laughs> so how are we going to protect those users? How are you going to allow more creativity in this ecosystem? Well, a lot of people will use these bots on Discord to kind of like bring in things, but it's not really a solution because it's what like, that is what leads to the hacks and the spam happening. If you do your authentication somewhere else and you like have the users go through these hula hoops, they finally get back to you. 
And we've seen that like o- almost a billion dollars of um, wallets, funds across Bitcoin and Ethereum have been hacked over the past years yeah. of Discord. So huge problem. That's where we came in and said, hey, I think we can bring a more secure, more private. Um, we plan to open source the project. So like really just kind of living the ethos um, and then letting people build on top of it. But it's a really ambitious project. You know, Discord and Telegram have been around for like almost 10 years. Like it's been a while. And so, you know, we're in year two uh, now or yeah. like you're, you're in the first one and a half really. And, um, you know, today though, like we, we've made some amazing strides. Um, we have about a hundred communities on console. And when a community comes to console, um, you sign in with your wallet that can be Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Stacks, and you can use your decentralized ID. You can use your NFTs and you can, I think, have just a better experience with not only chatting, but imagine you're a community, you want to have docs and web pages around that. You want to like upload your music. You want to like bring, you know, as a creator, you can really create like a space, like almost like a MySpace yeah. for your community. Uh, so that's what we're building and um, that's what we've built. And I guess the thing that's like interesting, you guys is like, you know, we're in the process of ramping up Bitcoin ordinals and to do a big release. Oh. So that that's full circle to where we are today. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh yeah, we love to hear that. So. Yeah. So um, you guys have been working pretty much in the Bitcoin ecosystem with Stack since 2021. Um, I that's have not, a question. That's not that's not actually correct. Um, oh, it's not okay. Yeah, we. I mean, we took funding from Trust Machines, and Trust okay. Machines is completely independent from Stacks. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So. So yeah. when did you start integrating to like the Bitcoin side? Um, I think we did, we did integrate first with stacks cause we knew that the stacks wallets were going to have Bitcoin wallets pretty soon. Yeah. And so that was always like the idea. So, I mean, from day one, we've been using, um, the stacks wallets. And then gotcha. as soon as they had the Bitcoin addresses, it was like our, it was like the easiest way to onboard people. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that, that was always in the game plan from the beginning, but when the addresses came in, that's whenever it was confirmed. So um, my question for you is you, you, you've been around the Bitcoin environment, you know, in terms of the community side uh, for a little bit. And then, like for me, I was on the EVM side after, you know, I really got into DeFi, right? And I stayed over there because I felt like Bitcoin was boring. Laser eyes were assholes. And, you know, I just didn't want anything to do with those people. But I, I would definitely hold Bitcoin because I knew the value of it. But um, there's nothing that really attracted me over until Ordinals. So and even Ordinals, it took me a couple of days and then the light bulb came on. So my question to you is, did you notice once ordinals became a thing that the energy for Bitcoin changed or did you, do you feel like it, there was always energy with stacks and, and, and lightning and all these other things? Great question. There's, there was always energy with stacks, which is one of the things that really drew me to it. I don't know how involved you guys are, but I think, you know, there's, at least a few hundred, I'd say like really hardcore people who believe in a Bitcoin L2. And I, I get that everybody has different philosophies on mm-hmm. how this should happen. And um, personally at console, like I try to stay out of it. Like I am yeah. more interested in like the creator themselves and like what the artists or what the community leaders want to do, we want to support. Um, But I do see the benefit of like building the Bitcoin ecosystem through other things than just sending and receiving Bitcoin. I think that's always been my thesis is that like we have this and even Satoshi talks about that early on, just about like creating, you know, ways, other layers and other things we could do on top of that. So I'm like, there has to be more that we can do. And so to me, um, I think when we saw Bitcoin ordinals, you know, did it have an impact? I mean... I think you guys know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like there's better, like we can, I can show you the numbers and yeah. you know, Bitcoin 2022 uh, in Miami versus Bitcoin 2023 in Miami. I worked the booth both years and I can tell you markedly completely different experience um, yeah. of, of the type of people coming in. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, I, I think you answered that question very well um, because 
honestly for me like i'm not anti stacks i'm not anti lightning um i am pro <laughs> ordinals because i just love the environment and everything there because i think that all of it can coexist right um but when you get too tied up into just thinking one way only i think that's where problems come up right and and i've gotten sucked into that because like I, my philosophy has always been close as close as as close to the rock as you can get is the best approach. But at the same time, what can you do? Right. It depends on that and, and being open-minded and also uh, just remembering that these L2 solutions, these sidechain solutions are also trying to help you have a solution on the ordinal layer as well. And then whenever all that comes together, I think that that can be a really beautiful thing. Um, and we've interviewed other founders that are working on stacks and stuff like that and, and just integrating ordinal. So yeah, I, I really appreciate that answer, and and um, I'm excited for what you guys are building, though. So, thanks. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, we we want to make people that like Bitcoin addresses and Bitcoin um, more social and help build communities around that. I, I can share with you um, a community that just launched um, on Console, uh, very special for Bitcoin and uh, really small that we're, we're still just trying to grow it in like a really organic way. Um, it's called 1BTC and you can go right now to 1BTC.chat if you want. And when you go there, you'll see the thesis and you'll see, um, but the entire site about 1BTC is it's about full coiners. So it's this idea, um, this is a community that wanted to have a conversation with people that really have skin in the game by let's say putting in like quite a bit of money of their personal money. There you go. Um, to really, I'd say like shape the future of Bitcoin, right? Their, their frustration was if you go into Reddit or you go into these telegram chats, people are loud and people are kind of nasty. Um, and a lot of times those people that are kind of loud and nasty, um, they might not even be holding any money. It's kind of scammers and all this stuff. Um, sometimes just like random addresses. But if you have to verify that you have one BTC, it's going to be like a, a certain amount of like a threshold to hopefully, it's an experiment, we'll see, but hopefully bring higher quality people that really want to talk about the future of Bitcoin. So that's what they built here. And they're using console on the back end. So it, it's all a console chat powered by our token gated verification using Bitcoin wallets. Oh, that's, well, awesome. that's awesome. Yeah. So this is, this is powered by console. A hundred percent. Yeah. If you, if you click through you basically you're at console <laughs> gotcha so you just, you just sign through your wallet and all that stuff and then you go through go, the, go and then you end up in the console platform basically yeah the verification process is like a little bit hard at the moment i think it's the first version um because you have to send a dust amount like a few cents to an address to verify that you and then we watch that wallet and we make sure that it keeps one btc full in it but it's a pretty big spam filter to like bring real people that really are invested in oh, Bitcoin together. Gotcha, gotcha. So that's th that's how they're token gating it. Exactly by sending the dust amount. You have yeah. to be a full Bitcoiner to get in there. <laughs> yeah, you have to that's be a full cool. Bitcoiner. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. So like, what what um what, what separates you guys from from Discord when you guys say like, ditch Discord, come to council? What and, and what would what would your opinion be? Um, what separates you guys from the actual Discord? Like, why go to Council over Discord? Yeah, Shizzy, great question. So, Discord was made for gamers, and it feels that way. It's very loud. Like, there's a lot of chat going on. It's difficult for newbies to come in and learn about a project. I know that myself firsthand. When I wanted to get involved in some different DAOs about two years ago, I found Discord. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to look and how to get involved. Um, my dream of Bitcoin and Web3 in general is that it can be brought to everyone in the world, right? I don't think it's enough for me if we, in 10 years, still have, you know, the same amount of users, like 0.5% of the world or whatever, I don't know. But it's like, we need to bring it to everybody. In order to do that, we need to make it much more easy to onboard and to come into this world and to learn about what's happening and to buy these assets, 
But that right now is very difficult. You buy the assets one place, you get the wallet another place. Um, on Discord, you probably have to go to like six or seven different sites to buy something, come together, get the wallet, sign the thing, <laughs> verify. We do all of that at console, right? Or that's what we're working towards step by step. We're not quite there yet, but but we're definitely like within one step, you connect your wallet and we pull in all your on-chain data, right? And so you're just free selling. You don't need a phone number. You don't need an email address. You can get our iPhone app and all you, you know, you're just chatting with a wallet address now. You could just, yeah. you know, man, I think that that's like the revolutionary change about how we see the future of the internet and the future of users ourselves connecting online. You, you know, I can see this being very beneficial for, for communities. First of all, you're not in the discord server. You don't get that fill. Like, you, you, like for example, the full corner or uh, full coiner site, it looks like their own website. It is their own domain. Right. It and is. So like you have your own platform, it feels like, right. And that you have the console platform working behind the scenes. Um, this also could be great for airdrops, like safe airdrops. Yes. So like if you join the, the community, they get your on-chain data, it's collected. The founders don't have to freaking jump through hoops to try to get all these addresses. So it'd be huge for ordinals too. Um, so I we, can see a lot of benefits from this. We are so excited about the airdrops. And I think that's like a kind of Easter egg or something that people probably are aware of because we have all of the addresses and the day that they came in. So like, you know, the first thousand users to console, like we can reward them or the most active, right? It's take it's taking an ability to reward people. Um, and we have some cool stuff coming with that. So <laughs> I think you're definitely on to like the way that we want to use console for our users as well. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. Can you talk about the wallet to wallet chat a bit? So what does that look like? Is it kind of like how AIM used to be? I'm, I'm kind of telling my age, uh, AOL <laughs> instant messenger, like kind of that style or what is it like? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you, I guess to log in, you would need a, a Stacks or EVM wallet. But if you go to the So top... we have our, we have our uh, Hyro uh, show wallet that we could log in with. Oh yeah. Go to the top, top. Uh right you go launch console yeah and you should go to stacks well now it's the leather wallet right Big it's change. the leather yeah. wallet yeah <laughs> do, you, do you actually know why they changed the name i just found this out yeah uh, oh no tell me it. maybe, no, maybe no, I, don't, no, no. I well maybe no, was, you, you know something i don't know tell me <laughs> there was a hero uh fake wallet on apple in, in the app store uh, and they couldn't get it off so instead of people keep getting tricked they were like let's just change the name of, of the wallet that's what that's what i heard anyway so i don't know why because uh, what... i logged in to this like the other day oh there it is uh, would it automatically kind of redirect me oh um, you might need to clear your cookies actually yeah. um just because okay. the head the leather wallet update i think um i think there's a little bit of updating that happened this week with, with what's the shortcut for that <laughs> i should know this oh go to the um top left the little the, the lock next to the domain name and yeah we're learning this live guys here yeah. we go <laughs> <laughs> and just... the the trash can just click okay. both the trash cans and then save and refresh okay. it's probably actually really good for someone who's trying to get in and yeah an issue. so this is awesome is that not working? Uh, let me see if I, yeah. Uh oh, hold on. Everything just went black. Okay, there uh, it is. Yeah, Shizzy, you might have to try it. Um, yeah, I, if you go to, I don't have that wallet logged in. So oh, okay, yes, I can show you on my phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I think if you, you might just need to reset your browser. Yeah, I mean, actually, this is like a real learning, I think, for anyone building in the space. Yeah. One of the most difficult things um, is the wallet log on. And it's something that we care about because the way that a Bitcoin address allows you to own your money, a Bitcoin address can be used to own your identity for chatting, for storing data, for Bitcoin ordinals, right? For so many other things. Um, and at the same time, the UI of this is really difficult. And I think it's like, we, we get, we get that a lot. Um, like if leather updated this week, we find that users are like having problems and it's not leather's fault. I think it's just like a cookies internet thing that isn't yeah. quite there. So, um, 
Uh, I can show you guys on my phone though. Yeah, I mean, this is console yeah. on my phone. You can check it out. So you can see, um, this is the group chat here. Out of steady this year. There you go. Yep. Yeah. And, That's cool. Uh, yeah, and um, you know, we have direct messages similarly to like Telegram or something like that. You can click in and essentially what you're doing is you can see there's wallet addresses. You can see there's .eth names, there's yeah. .btc names, and you could just kind of, um, you can chat with, you know, a variety of different people there. So that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So it'll, it'll just pick up what NFTs you have in your wallet that you sign in, and then you can use those as like the PFP for your console account. Yeah, exactly. So um, the cool thing, I mean, the thing that I like about, about console what we're building is like whenever you come to a page, a community, there's a homepage, right? So this is the homepage. And we have these different pages. You can learn about the project. So, you know, you can click on like something. And all of this is either public or token gated. It's really up to the community how they set this. So that's like your first step into console as a user. Um, awesome. And then if you want to token gate, uh, I mean, to use your NFTs, because we're reading your on chain data, we can just pull in all your on chain data. So if you have NFTs, if you have Bitcoin, all of that, we can just read from your wallet. Sorry, it's a little hard right there. And um, this that's is awesome. Where, sure. This is where we'll be adding the Bitcoin ordinals. Um, okay. So stay, gotcha. stay tuned to that. Do you, do you know which wallet you guys are adding? Um, X first, Uniset, uh, or just keep it leather? Uh, no, X first also works. Yeah. If you have X first installed. Yeah. Okay. I, I do have X first installed, but it wasn't working for me. Huh. It, it might not be ready yet unless it's under the wallet connect option. No, it would be stacks. It should be experts. And, and it might be mobile only because, yeah, because like when okay. we look, yeah, when we look on PC, it only shows stacks and, uh, oh, yeah. So, so maybe it's defaulting then there to, to leather because when I click on stacks, it only like leather automatically pops up even though I have experts in Unisat. But let yeah. me log. All of those, this is true for all websites, Gamma as well. If you have multiple wallets installed, the browser doesn't know which okay. one to open. So what you need to do is have different profiles for each wallet. It's pretty frustrating. This is what I'm talking about. about users, <laughs> users being frustrated. So these are the things I learned. Um, so if you have Xverse, Unisat, and Leather, they're all going to just not know which one. And it makes a really inconsistent experience. So yeah. No, I agree. And that, I think that's the part of Web3 that that we all as a like just overall DeFi crypto community need to kind of make better. Because if we're trying to onboard people from Web2 that don't know anything about crypto and DeFi, this is the barrier of entry, right? Is like, oh, why do I have to do that? Because I can just get on PayPal and then I don't have to do all these you know, connect yeah. my wallets and all this stuff. Yeah. But it's getting better. I'll say it is getting better, but um, like some like the project that you guys are building, I like your approach to say, you know what, even though like Bitcoin's a big focus of ours, we're welcome welcoming all these other wallets in the ETH side. Because at the end of the day, I, I feel like the the survivors of DeFi are going to in, interact so much more like 10 years down the road, anyways. So this needs to happen. Um and the the, the losers will fall off and they'll die off and the winners will stay and will yeah. interact, right? So I love that. Cool. So like if, if say like say if I was community and I launched a um like an ordinal right like a, a a JPEG version of an ordinal on Magic Eden and I I made a hundred of them and I just gave them away to my hundred closest um followers and that way I could I token gate that that ordinal into your into your site so it just just a hundred of my holders can be in there with, with us yeah definitely so um so this isn't live yet but if anyone. If you guys or anyone listening wants to um, collaborate with us, you know we want to work one on one with a few communities and to help bring this alive. And so, you know, the first collaboration that we're doing is we are working with Gamma uh, and a few Bitcoin ordinals communities that are like kind of their pick uh, to help pilot pilot this. And what we're going to do with them is if you are on Gamma. We'll, we have an API integration with Gamma. So any collection on Gamma will be able to read the collect collection uh, automatically. So we'll be able to use that API as the token gate. 
Um, awesome. If yeah, if you're not on Gamma, we will we have a way of just kind of uploading your collection data yeah. um, um, without without that. So there's the two options you'll have. Well, everyone should be on Gamma by now with the prints and stuff and Sir Gadfly uh, over there. We, we just had on. I mean, everyone should be at least messing with Gamma at this point. So I love, I that, love shouldn't, Gamma. that shouldn't be an excuse. Yeah, Gamma's yeah. the best. It's one of yeah. our favorites. So cool. Yeah, appreciate sure. that. And, and we have uh, some pretty good relationships with some of the larger ordinal communities uh founders and so we'll we'll talk to them and, and you know if they're interested they'll pass them your yeah, way guys that would be awesome because we would love like i said we have resources we want to do some like one-on-one -on -one, like how do we make these communities shine um and we have resources too um to probably we're, we're trying to put together our favorite 12 projects to put on the home page and really get a big press release around so I think the more the merrier. If we got some good projects, we'd love to hear from them. So let me know, please. That's awesome, for sure. Yeah, definitely, we, we talk we talk to founders every day. That's what we do. So we'll definitely. Yeah, I'll, I'll give uh, my uh, I'll give my info right now too. I'm at Castig yeah. C A S T I G on Twitter, uh, and I'm Chris at Console.xyz. So if anybody wants to reach out, um, let me know. I would love to work with your uh, with more Bitcoin. I mean, we're just really bullish on Bitcoin ordinals, and we want to help those communities so please let me know how we can help you for sure I mean, how, how, how can you not be right like this this is we're close <laughs> like, like all the money is closer to the rock we're headed back to the rock you know like <laughs> that's, you, what, that's one thing we keep showing the show but did you just make that up that's pretty good <laughs> right, like you got that from a, one of our one people we had on crypto bra uh, shout great. him out he's a really good guy but he he's all about like getting closer to the rock man because the rock is get close to the get close to the rock no, that's how you but, win, man. So, so when is the um, uh, what, do you have dates set for the ordinal uh event, or what what does that look like? Yeah, um, it's a little unofficial, but we're kind of looking around like Halloween, so like late, late October. Um, in between there for console, we have our iPhone app should be out in the Apple App Store, yeah. um, probably around October 1st. and. Awesome. In the meantime, we're just actively working with Gamma to put together um, this list of 12 Bitcoin ordinals that we really want to highlight that we're working with one on one. So that's kind of in the meantime, what we're doing is just trying to like see which communities and we have a lot of people applying. Um, but yeah, reach, reach out and happy to chat more. That's kind of the plan. So around the Halloween, you should yeah. see yeah. this partnership. Well Halloween is actually the, the birthday of the white paper. So that might actually be a really good day for you guys. So. <laughs> is it? I, I, Bitcoin white paper. Halloween. His, historian, historian over here. It's kind of. Hey, I, I love Bitcoin, <laughs> man. I love it. I know everything about it. I didn't that's know why. That. That's why they made the orange logo. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. but. Uh... <laughs> <That's not mine>. <laughs> <laughs> if the white paper was around Halloween, what? I feel like Bitcoin Day is like what January 10th or something, right? What, that's when that? it launched. But the white paper came out, and everyone started reading it on Halloween, and then it launched. Um, january i want to say fourth or something somewhere around somewhere around there and then how oh. and then the, the how finney transaction happened a week later when satoshi said it, how the first, and when uh, he says everyone was reading it he's probably talking about like 100 people at that time maybe. like adam back and nick <laughs> zavo and how finney but yeah but um i don't know if you guys maybe this is like old news for you guys but do you guys know the len sassman connection and all that you heard that story uh -oh. no i'd love to hear it Oh my God! I am probably not the most qualified person to tell you this, but, I, but, <laughs> but I'll try. I'll try my best. There is a um, there is a medium post. I'll I'll share it with you guys, and it's just like a must read. It's basically the most compelling argument I've heard for who Satoshi is. <laughs> oh, is it is it the Len Sesaman and Satoshi a cyberpunk yes. history? I, I just sent it to you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you've read I'm that? Yeah. I'm definitely gonna read it. Um, yeah, we'll it's have pretty, any show notes for you guys. Let's it's pretty go. incredible. It, it answers questions of like reasonable reasons why Satoshi disappeared. Um, also, Len, uh, his name is like the same amount of letters, Len Sassaman, as, uh, uh, as Satoshi, as uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. There's like all these like little like Easter eggs and clues that are given. It's pretty good. Let's check yeah. it out. Yeah, I, lo I love diving down rabbit holes for sure. Um, but hopefully, I won't stay up to like three. <laughs> <laughs> going down this this rabbit hole but i mean i i'm pretty sure that it's it's how finney adam back and nick zabo nick zabo wrote the paper how finney adam back kind of put everything together adam back was mentioned in the um the white paper 
uh, how Fenny lived a couple blocks away from this man named Dorian uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, who worked for the government doing some type of crazy experiments. Dorian and Hal Finney knew each other. When Dorian was, um, they said something to him about Bitcoin. He said, I worked on the project in very early days, but that's it. No one really put the two together, which Hal Finney kind of went to him and said, hey, what do you think about this? So that that's just my thing. But, then, but didn't, Finney, they, didn't they grill the, the Nakamoto guy? Like, they grilled them. Like hard. Yeah. Like I, I would have th- thought he would have broke. If you knew he, that, he, he works for the Ameri- the government. They, they they definitely pulled it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's just my yeah. opinion. But that that's who I think Satoshi is. I think it's the three of them. And I think Halfini died in thirteen, and when he died, the keys died with him. So <laughs> I feel like you dream that man. Like you, just, I do. You're so like convicted with that story. I'm convinced, man. <laughs> I'm convinced in the story. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I mean, like, I love what you guys are doing. I love that, like, these type of applications are uh, starting to, like, actually be circulated and and used. Right. So um, I did have a question, um, you know, like for the full coiners website, like how would that process work? Right. So if I was in ordinals collection and I wanted my own website custom like that for the console in the back, how would that work? Would I have to, like, buy my domain do the front end design and then connect with your one of your back end developers or yeah um so they did the front end design themselves using like a completely different solution and the, got the domain and then they just linked to the verification process that we set up so the verification process to verify a, a wallet has bitcoin in it and they used also they used one bdc but you could use like Point, like you'd use like, I don't know, 10, like 10,000 sats or whatever you want to use. And that's just like a way to say, hey, this is like a bit more authority on this. Account, yeah, right. For sure. So, so you could it's open source. Um, I should probably write a blog post about it. It's open yeah. source. Anyone could use the verification method. And then the verification method we read from that verification method. So we're we're already reading that on our site. So long story short, if this is interesting to you guys or anybody else listening, just reach out to me and like I'll just kind of point you to the places. Um, if you want to use um, one BTC verification for your own console, that's available right now, um, and we could contour. We you know, we could work with you guys. So let me. Yeah, know. but after they sign in and verify, does like all the like the the social dynamics of it, like the the actual platform, does does your back end developer like do they connect to an API? How does that work? Like for them, like on their website. Or did they get redirected to your to console? They they get they after the verification they get redirected to the console. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's just purely verification token gated domain website. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. All right, Chris, it was great talking to you, man. This is part of the show where we kind of give you the stage to talk to our community, talk to your community, to talk to potential new community members. Uh, the stage is yours. You can kind of say whatever you want. Yeah, no, this has been a pleasure. I think anyone listening, you know, if you're passionate about, um, I would say doing things the right way, but not always the quick way. I think console is where you should be. I think there's a lot of cheap solutions out there. Like if you care about Bitcoin ordinals or sovereignty and bringing your community together, like sure, you could spin up a Telegram, you spin up a Discord. But I think longer term, where we're going and the communities we want to take with us really care about the values that align with Bitcoin and align with this mission. And so we're looking, like I shared with the examples already, is like we're looking to like collaborate. Like we're more of like an experimental lab studio to collaborate with communities. We're not just trying to like, you know, be a Telegram or Discord ripoff. So we have a we have a different vision and we're looking to align with people that share that vision. So reach out. We'd love to hear from you. I, that's really awesome. I, I really, I really like your product. I, I really like how you're, how hands-on you are with the, with the, you know, the people coming. Like, if I, if I need help with Discord, I gotta, you know, figure out a way to do it. Like, you got, you seem to be really on point and re- ready to help everyone, and that is amazing. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's what we're building. Thanks, man. Yep, yep. And the best way to reach you is uh, through your Twitter, and and we'll yeah. have all the Twitter and contact information with the website in the description. And we, we really appreciate you joining us today, Chris. Thanks so much, guys. It's really, really good hang with you guys. I love all the questions. I love the vibe, the energy. Thanks for bringing it. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing this yeah. go live. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for hanging. And 
and feel free to hit us up when you're ready to go live. Um, hopefully that's uh, the white paper birthday because that would be really cool. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I love see, that. See. I actually, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to let Nick from Gamma know that. I think I'm like, hey, well, let's, let's do this on the white paper birthday. Now that I know <laughs> that, why not? That's a great idea. Cool. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks a lot, buddy. Peace. All Take right. care. Bye. See you later. So that was fun, man. It was really fun. It was nice, to, really nice to meet him, and uh, really nice to to hear hear about different projects that are all over the space. Guys, there's so many of them, and they're all coming to Ordinals. Everything's yeah. coming in. Yeah, the Ordinals. And, guys. I mean, I I think that you know you heard it from someone that is um, open minded from every aspect of the Bitcoin ecosystem. You know, you can tell he he's not one of those that's just like you know ordinals only stacks only lightning only you know whatever uh or just none of that and only bitcoin you know he's very open-minded and i love that you know i, I think we need to be open-minded for stuff that is makes sense right um in terms of like value what value does this layer bring um and i think that that's what console has because you can see on their website when you try to get your wallet connected that there's a, a you know, various amounts of different wallets you can connect with. Um, and in the end, I, I do stand by my statement that we will, all the strong chains will be very, uh, you know, uh, interoperable with each other and we'll be communicating with each other um, that way. So, yeah. But everyone knows Ordinal is going to win. Ordinal is going to be the only thing that matters. But. <laughs> yeah. AWS I mean, chains are dead. AWS yeah, chains are dead. <laughs> I, I definitely don't agree with that. Um, but I do, I, I do, uh, Ordinals is definitely my where my home is now, and yeah. for sure. Um, but I think like you know the future is bright for crypto and DeFi in general. But this next wave is definitely going to be a Bitcoin um, powered. Yeah, wave. but you, you definitely are right though. It it would be somewhere nice to have these all these communities in the same place, and you can kind of like vibe off them, which is a really good idea. I mean, we need more things like Discord. Discord's monopoly, and it's already been hacked so many times, and it's really nice to have somebody right there on call ready to help out with any type of issue that's going on rather than you know discord yeah, like, oh, well, yeah. well that that's oh. obviously going to change if it scales because like there's no way he's going to be able to help like ten thousand people in a night <laughs> you know but no but 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 like it def i think it's more than you know to your point um from a little bit of a different angle or perspective is getting getting in at ground level ground zero right yeah. like the 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 ground level of, of this type of project taking off then you have access to people like chris and um and, and maybe it isn't as difficult as you know when you run into jams uh with discord and you yeah. know everything here is 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 about sovereignty and i love his background of of you know the bit torrent stuff because yeah. i feel like society actually kind of went backwards to where we tried the napster and the limewire and the bit torrent stuff and it was actually DeFi that looked like it would be fit right in with DeFi, you know, in terms 100%. of like r removing the middleman. But we tried it too early and we didn't have the concept at the time of, oh, this needs to happen to remove the middleman for musicians, to yeah. remove the middleman for movie makers, to remove the middleman. Because that's where I feel like it's going. And even for like the the movie industry and, and stuff i mean like even like movie stars aren't working the same way that they were before before no. covid before covid they were putting out movies every week new movies here yep. and there that has changed dude and so i think i can see a revolution <laughs> of uh um you know ordinals and bitcoin and and these type of uh decentralized uh blockchains being the answer to um just media uh getting media directly from the artist to the consumer awesome yeah 100 100 agree you, you can, like that that's kind of what it's all about it's kind of getting everyone to fully connect it and i guess that's what exactly what console is so for sure for sure all right guys with that said uh, i want to appreciate you guys for watching liking listening following us uh remember we we're on apple we we're on spotify if you guys can't watch you can definitely listen we appreciate you guys 100 percent, and uh that's it from us yep Peace. And just remember, the revolution will be televised. televised. That's my new catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Peace. Yeah, we're going to hang on for one more second because I can't find a thing. But it's all good. If you stayed this long, we love you guys. Peace. Peace.